Hello, and welcome to my What Sold video for the week of <laughs> for the week of May 21st through May 27th. Uh, welcome. My name is Trisha, and I am a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, Etsy, and ThreadUp. My store name is Sandy and Auto. I did not have any Etsy sales this week. Uh, I have not listed on Etsy for a few weeks, so that's not surprising that I wouldn't have any sales there. But I did have 19 total sales this week. 10 were on eBay, 5 were on Poshmark, and 4 were on ThreadUp. Um, although my sales numbers were down uh, this week, my uh, sale dollars were actually up 14%, which was good because last week was uh, last week was a big hit. Um, almost half of my sales were gone um, last week. Um, not sure what was quite going on other than a lot of the country was opening up and people might have been just getting a little fresh air out um, and doing some shopping. But um, I did have a couple of higher dollar um, sales this week, which was very nice to help bring my dollar sale up. So uh, let's go ahead and go through my sales and I will give you some um, information on um, what was listed, how I listed, how I picked anything else that kind of comes to my mind. One thing I will mention is that my cost of goods, um, which I do annual um, average for is $2.25. Uh, uh, when we get to that point of talking about um, the actual amounts, but just kind of keep that in mind that I do annualize uh, $2.25 for my cost of goods per item, although some I have no cost for, some I have up paid for, it all kind of averages out to that amount. Um, and some items are from my own personal and fa other family um, personal, so I don't quite, um, I calculate those as basically free um, when I do that annual and ad annual averaging. <laughs> oh, that was a tough one to say. Uh, but up first is this Nike um, top. This was an extra small. Um, it was very fitting, I, sh I will say. Um, and it did have this 2015 U.S. Open Chambers Bay, so it wasn't going to appeal to everyone, although it was a Nike uh, performance dry fit top. Um, it had a really pretty uh, pattern woven through it, kind of this multicolored purple. Um, it was on sale. I was previously, I believe, running a um, it varies. It, it kind of varies. Sometimes I do 17, 20, 25 percent. It had been on sale, but I did accept a best offer of five dollars on this one just because it was such a small size and it wasn't really getting a lot of interest. Um, I went ahead and took a best offer of, 20, of five dollars on this one. Also, I want to mention with eBay that I do have um, two percent promoted listings um, on all of my items. So as you're listing items, when you get down to the very bottom of the screen, it asks if you want to do the percentage of promoted listings. And I do all of mine at two percent. I know a, a lot of people don't do it. Some people have different philosophies for different amounts. I have found um, two percent kind of works for me, um, for the most part, I had um, 10 eBay sales, as I mentioned, and five of them were sold through promoted listings. So half um, were sold, and it only cost then 2% of the value of what it sells for, um, is how that's calculated. Uh, the next item that sold was this Nautica box. It had probably been a watch box or had some other 
um, item inside it. And but it was really pretty. It had this nice sailboat. It was nice wood, um, velvet lined on it, and um, it sold for um, eight dollars and ninety nine cents. And this one did also sell through a promoted listing. Also, want to mention, which I forgot to, is that the buyer pays shipping on all of my items unless I. Um, and I, if I did do free shipping, I definitely would mention it. But a buyer pays shipping on all of the items. Up next is this really pretty crocheted um, handbag. Um, it was really nicely um, done with the um, different colors of cream and tan and brown. And then these pretty roses that were also crocheted in. On the inside, it was very nicely made. Um, with this just material, but it did have a pocket. Um, the um, straps for the um, handles were sewn in very nicely, and it did have this really pretty latch on it. Didn't have any markings on the inside, so I wasn't sure who made it, uh, but it did sell. Um, I had sent out a offer to watchers on this one and so I had taken another 10% off and so it sold for $20.24. Up next is this, I'm going to say Boggs, B-H-A-G apostrophe S is who made this. Um, I would imagine it's kind of done to be kind of in the free people type style. Um, very nice top. I did lighten up, um, and my camera kind of does this automatically, lightens up when it comes in close, which on black is actually really helpful because you can see it's really hard to see the intricate design on this one. But it did have a very pretty um, design, nice details, really pretty sleeve. It had that kind of bell sleeve on it. Um, it was a free size. It didn't really have a size, but I did include the measurements. Um, on all my clothing items, I do include um, some basic measurements, like on tops, I do across the chest. Um, I do across the hem also, because that's important for people to know how wide it is across the hem. I do the length, and then I usually will do the length of the sleeve also, um, so people have a good idea of how that's going to fit on them. I do just do a flat lay for my measurements, so I will just lay it flat, and then I will measure across and across and then up and down and then the sleeve also I will do it that way um, just I like to include measurements not everyone does I'm more comfortable uh, because I don't accept returns and so I'm much more comfortable knowing that the person has the measurements knowing how it's going to fit them and knowing that they're they're buying um, knowing what the measurements are going to be on them and if it's going to fit. Um, I do get some questions, mostly on Poshmark, I get questions about, will this fit a size, you know, 6, 8? Well, I don't really know what they interpret a size 6, 8 to be, and I'm not going to say yes or no because I don't know what their measurements are. And so I just refer them to, you know, please look at the measurements in the listing to determine, you know, if it's going to fit you. Or sometimes I will say, you know, go to the um, uh, the manufacturer's um, website, you know, whoever makes it. Go to their website and look at the measurements um, just to determine if it's going to fit you or not. Um, also, I want to mention that I do list on eBay and Poshmark, and I do cross-post 95% of my items. Every once in a while, I'll come across one. It's like, eh, I'll just put it on eBay. It's not really something that I would consider selling on Poshmark. Um, but most of the items I do, um, all clothing items, home decor, vintage or not, um, I will cross post on Poshmark. And the reason I mention that is because this item sold on eBay. I had it cross-listed on Poshmark. I don't 
typically delete my items. I do mark them as not for sale any longer on Poshmark um, just to kind of keep them floating around in the store um, so people can see if they really want to and scroll down to the bottom of my store, they can see, I guess, all the items that I've had for sale and get a feel for the types of items that I list in my um, store. This was a very, very small um, planter. I believe he was just like three by three inches. Um, very, very tiny. But when I marked it um, not no, not for sale on Poshmark, I did get a question on whether or not it was still available. So people are definitely shopping on Poshmark for home decor items, again, vintage or not. And so I do cross post them um, and a lot of times as you can see shipping um, because of the five pound limit shipping a lot of times is cheaper on Poshmark than it is on eBay um, which is one of the other reasons why I like selling these types of items on Poshmark because you can get up to five pounds for seven dollars and eleven cents which is a really good deal um, this item had a really interesting mark, and I'm still not sure exactly what it is, this little hole that's right here. Not quite sure what originally that was, if it was just like a when they were making it, um, they needed to put a little mark there or what it was for. But since it was there, I did mention it up in the de the condition description and then I also do mention it in the body of my um, description anytime I see markings like that um, if I had seen like in the um, top if I had seen any flaws or anything like that I would mention them um, up here in the condition and also in the description uh, but this oh this item did sell for nine dollars and ninety nine cents and up next is this um, coffee cup, which was part of a series. Um, this Vicki Sawyer had done different animals and different flower combinations on mugs. And this one just happened to be a deer. And I think these are lilies. I'm not 100% sure what kind of flower they were. I just put lily. Um, <laughs> Nobody corrected me, so I'm hoping that I got the flower right on that one. Um, but there are a bunch of different, um, I, there's probably four in the series, or maybe even more, of um, different animals with different flowers. And here's a close-up of the bottom of where it says Vicki Sawyer, Newbone China, and the information and when I was at the thrift store I just I knew it was unique um, the pattern is on both sides which is always nice when it's repeated on the front and the back and it has this really pretty there we go um, I think those are pine cones may might be flowers um, on the inside also so it was very pretty very well done and this sold for $14.99 and this did sell through a promoted listing um, next up this is a really interesting item I believe that there was a there we go that, that there was a top to this because of the way the handle is constructed um, don't know what it would have looked like, um, but this was a very interesting kind of wooden stein uh, beer mug. Um, it did appear to be made out of a solid piece of wood and then just carved um, out, but I thought that the design on the outside was very interesting and kind of a folk art uh, type piece. And this one, um, I sent out a, an additional 10% off to watchers. And so this sold for $23.62. And uh, next up is this beautiful crocheted um, flower. I don't know what the pattern was on this, but two different kinds or even more than just two different kinds of flowers all kind of crocheted together. Um, this was 54 inches by 71 inches. 
um, but very nice, very, very heavy. Um, it was probably five or close to five pounds on its own um, before I got it into a box to ship. Um, so I would imagine that that probably deterred. I'm in Washington State on the West Coast. So it probably deterred anybody on the East Coast or even in the Midwest uh, because of the weight of this item um, from purchasing. Uh, but it was very well done. You can see the pretty um, a pattern that's on the edges. Um, it was very clean. I did send it through um, a very gentle cycle in the washing machine and it came out fantastic. I let it um, air dry because um, I thought that would be best <laughs> for this thing because uh, I wasn't really sure what the material you know, or what the yarn consistency was made out of. But there was not even a stitch out of place on this thing. This was in beautiful condition. I loved the colors of it. And it did sell for $44.99. And it went to California, which was very nice. So the shipping on this to California was $14.40, which I thought was reasonable. Um, but I would imagine then as you went across the country, it would turn into 20 and possibly even $30 uh, by the time you got to the East Coast. So I was very glad that this ended up going to California, which made the shipping cost a whole lot cheaper. Uh, next up is this Carol, and I'm not sure how to pronounce that, um, War Weir. Um, it was a black one piece extra large and I did take a best offer of $16 on this one and this did sell through a promoted listing and when I photograph swimsuits um, one thing I like to be sure I take pictures of are the insides of the cups just to show again that can any condition issues and a picture of the crotch just again to show any condition issues. Um, I did mention this did have a really pretty, um, oh, that's the back. Let's get to the front here. This did have a very pretty crisscross design right here, but I did mention that there were right here, a couple of the stitches were coming undone across there. So I did mention that, that they were loosening a little bit um, on that. And so um, I felt the $16 offer was very reasonable on this item. And up next is my um, largest sale of the week. This actually sold for $80 and, and now I'm not even going to be able to find it on my sheet. Um, Oh, the amount's gone. Oh. <laughs> well, I will have to I will have to update my um numbers and post them um on the, well, maybe I could I'll just whip out the calculator and I will do that because for some reason um as I'm looking at my spreadsheet going, "Oh, um the sale price did not um show up on there." So, um I'm, gosh, I'm not sure what happened there. Isn't that weird? Anyway, um, <laughs> this ended up selling, which I remembered, for $80.99. Um, and it sold through the global shipping. Um, I do have that option. I, um, I'm i more comfortable shipping internationally um, for it to go through global shipping. And then um, it's eBay's concern once it um, goes through um, the postal and that country's postal. Um, I'm, I personally am much more comfortable kind of pushing that back on to eBay um, to handle that. Uh, but this is an Art LeMay uh, print 
framed print. Um, he is a Canadian artist. This is very well done. Um, I don't know much about ducks. I am not an expert, um, but I could tell again looking at this you know using your kind of best judgment that this was something that was very nice it was signed um, and the true companions was written on there it was very nicely framed it had information on the artist on the back um, there's a close-up of the information and that um, this print came from canada um, I do have a couple videos on my YouTube channel about what I look for when I'm at yard sales, thrift stores, and I'm looking for, and I'm looking through the art. I have found some really good pieces of art and have sold them. I have a couple pieces, um, really good ones still in my store for sale, waiting for the right buyer to come along on those uh one of them is a larger piece and i i know the shipping costs on that one is probably a little bit of a deterrent but it's a, a very nice piece um, but this one was um again just kind of looking at it it's like yeah this is something special um definitely you can check out the artists on you know ebay um art lemay is a very well-known artist and has a lot of other prints um he's done several different duck prints um so there's a lot on there um to know that he um brings in more dollar um a higher dollar amount than your average artist um so this was a good find um and if i didn't mention this is going to england through the global shipping and that was my last eBay sale. I'll go through Poshmark here. Um, up first were these GX Studio by Gwen Stefani um, glasses. They were a prescription glass, which I did include the prescription. There was a little bit of a scratch on one of the lenses, but when I put the glasses on, um, you wouldn't really notice them. I would imagine somebody is probably going to take these frames and take the glasses and put their own prescription in there um, but they were this really pretty tortoise shell design the frame um, part back here is actually blue with this pretty turquoise -y aqua color um, took lots of different pictures on it and then this one here you can see it says gx by gwen stefani um, as the indicator and these sold for $25, which was a best offer. Up next is this, this is a Ray Dunn. It's a different um, style, part of a different series that was done. This is the Office series. There's, um, what is there, edit, delete, save, and can't remember the other one as part of the series uh, so this was the edit mug um, it had this cute little pair of scissors on the back and this sold for a best offer of $13 uh, this is Corette City Blues women's top um, Corette I think is one of those brands that um, people know and people like and people look for specifically and know their size in it. This sold in like one, maybe two days after listing. Um, so it's a, I think this is a very um, high followed brand. Uh, plus it's a nice top for summer, nice short sleeve, um, nice check pattern, pretty accent on the um, pocket there and really pretty button details on this and this sold for fifteen dollars uh, next up are these shoes that were very hard for me to get rid of because they were i wear a seven and a half and these were a seven and a half and um, they're very pretty but i don't need any more shoes so i went ahead and uh, sold these these were really nice report espadrilles um, they were in very good condition and a really pretty pattern 
on these. Surprisingly, the soles were really dirty, and I tried a lot of different techniques to get them clean, and that just would not come out. But you can see from the inside, um, they're very, very um, clean on the inside. So I'm not quite sure what whoever owned these before, what they walked in to get them quite so dirty. Um, but these did sell for $22. And my last Poshmark sale is this very interestingly shaped dog. Um, this is Occupied Japan uh, when, it, when it was made. And it is either a planter or a toothpick holder. He is only three and a quarter by three and a quarter. He again is quite small. And this is actually a very, um, oh gosh, um, it's a it's a pattern that is done in a lot of different colors. This is very well known and well replicated pattern, even though he is a very unusual looking dog. Um, but you will see even if you do a search on eBay on him, you will see him in a lot of different colors. Um, yeah, I I don't quite get it. Um, but I thought he was very distinct enough looking to um, give him a shot. I love um, occupied Japan items and I'm always kind of on the lookout for them. I have a little collection of them. This one I wasn't really interested in keeping, but definitely um, I will continue to pick up occupied Japan. Here you can see made in occupied Japan. Um, and he did sell for $10. And those were my Poshmark sales. And on to Thread Up. Um, I'm still in kind of, this was, I think, in the second or third bag or kit that I sent to Thread Up. So I'm still learning what I'm sending in, what I'm not sending in. I'm doing, trying to do a better job of price pointing um, some items. Um, this one um, would have been okay if I hadn't had to discount it to um, $29.99 to get it to sell. This was actually sold again with a 20% um, off coupon. So my portion was only $4.80 and I probably wouldn't send um, anything like this back into thread up. I would probably sell this myself. Um, this is a Lane Bryant outlet, which I, at the time, again, I didn't identify this as an outlet and I probably won't send Lane Bryant outlet items in again because it only had a $30 retail value. And when listing on ThreadUp, you can you can list for 20% off of what they establish as the retail price, which was $23.99, which is what it sold for. It sold very quickly because um, it's really cute. And my portion was four dollars and eight cents on that so again probably wouldn't send a lane bryant outlet um, item to them lane bryant seems to have a much higher retail amount on it so you're able to price it a little higher um, so i'll have to watch out for that as i send in lane bryant things try to identify and make sure it's not an outlet item um, up next is this Prana Top. Uh, this was a size large, and this sold for $42.99. My portion that I got was $11.40, so that's better. Um, the one thing I like about sending to Thread Up is that, again, I don't have to um, photograph it, I don't have to list it. I don't have to store it. I don't have to ship it. Um, so on items priced this strategy and higher, um, I feel is, is a benefit. Um, $11.40 for this. By the time you take your time 
the um, whatever you sell it for, the fees out of that, I feel $11.40 is a good price for this type of an item. Um, so that works out well. Um, this Spencer Alexis, they call it a cardigan. I guess it's kind of a cardigan. Um, it was kind of a lightweight jacket um, type item. Really pretty detail, but again, only had a $45 retail amount. Um, so I was only able to price within 80% of $45, which was $35.99, and my portion was $8.28. So again, I probably wouldn't send that in um, to thread up in the future. Um, so going through the numbers, overall my sales were up um 14 percent over um last week and i'm adding because of my silly little spreadsheet so my total sales were 429 dollars and 36 cents my cost of goods was um 42 dollars and 75 cents my fees um, Poshmark fees, final value fees, eBay fees, PayPal fees was uh, $64.95, leaving my profit, making sure that that added all up correctly, profit this week was $268.86. And I do include the um, how eBay works the um, shipping credit that they give. Um, I do include that in my uh, profit report also, kind of expenses and profits and how that works out. Um, so yeah, so that is uh, this week of my 19 sales. Um, thanks for watching. Um, hope everyone is able to get outside and stay safe and all of that good stuff and um, again thanks to anyone who may happen to be watching this um, who purchased something I'm very thankful and appreciative for every sale that I did get and um, if you enjoy this type of content um, consider subscribing to my channel I am going to be doing um, again weekly um, what sold videos and as my um, thread up kits come up I'm going to be doing updates on those if you're interested in learning about or um, selling on thread up or just kind of curious about what's going on with that it's a process I'm still learning and appreciate a like on the way out if you enjoyed this and any comments or questions please feel free to leave those behind and thanks again and I will uh, see you next time